So my thesis is not about unpredictability because I came for the last day. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about a little bit about my market. It's a completely different market from Europe and America and the U.S. Uh, we are very confident about the future, but uh, the, the, the present is a chaos. We never know what to do. It's crazy. We have inflation. We have politician problems and. So I, I, I asked one of the classes that I had here in the school, was try to do something really that I could work, could use in my agents, in my market. So I focus on the Brazilian market and uh, and lesson from the catwalks because I really think that we can learn, we can really learn from the fashion industry, and and that's what I want to prove. How Brazilian advertising agents could become more lucrative, more lucrative by applying the, teaching, the teachings of great fashion design labels. So my thesis is about money. It's about make money. Uh, it's about try to change the business models of Brazilian agents. Maybe in other countries you can do it, like in Central America and some parts of uh, Europe, because the Brazilian market is a really young market. We are only well. The first advertising agent was launched 1912, so it's too close. We don't have even 100 years of advertising in Brazil, and so we're still not woke now. The statement of fact. So, I would like to start uh, from the essence of the problem. A large percent of the advertising agents in Brazil have become very white over the past 20 years. What I mean about white is like not like to express themselves. Uh, we we uh, had in some parts of our history uh, the entrance of a lot of multinational groups, and they trying and they brought all the dynamic and the framework of the American uh, agents and they trying to forget about the Brazilian identity. And it's, I'm not, when I talk about white, it's not only about architecture, but uh, uh, the differentiation, we lost the differentiation in the Brazilian markets. All the agents just look alike. There is no differentiation between the agents and the client doesn't know where to put their money. I think that's a problem of the globalization in the poor markets or the South American markets. They really don't trust in, 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 the, for, in the, 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 the way that we did the advertising. They try to change it. So if you go to one agent like Ken Harrison or to even to DDB, they just look the same. They do the same work. There's no differentiation. There's no work. There's no, nothing that you can say, well, that's it's a really different stuff that they're doing. So I think, and that's my they believe that if you look to fashion industry, which provides us main reference and model, uh, I think we can do something really different. I'm not talking about architecture, but I want to talk about concepts. Uh, it's not the design labels. Uh, they 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 create something different. When you go, you don't buy a product. You buy a feeling. You buy a sensation. You buy the code that they sell and advertise somehow like this. When one client comes to my agency, he wants to do something different from the other one that he had. And they have to show him that I'm different. And how can I do it? It's not about only redesign the agents, but it's the way we, we should think. To arrive at this conclusion, I understand three aspects and I, I want to show. The first one is the history of advertising in Brazil. I'm going to be really brief about this question because, well, only 100 years, I can tell in two, one second. The second is the formation of the fashion industry. To understand that somehow they change because it used to be a tailor who who designed the dress and stuff like that. And they, they became an industry. And the third, I created the Gucci model. I could be Prada model, but I think it be better. <laughs> so, the history of advertising in Brazil. 
we, we have to look at Brazilian uh, 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 history to understand how the change in the social, social and economic uh, development we had, how to change advertising, because it's really related. If, if you have a huge uh, uh, change in the social and economic uh, in Brazil, we're going to have a change in the advertising as well. Brazilian advertising emerged from the streets, the voice of people. The, the street vendors are very common in Brazil. People that go walk in the streets and sell stuff and sell stuff. That's the reason we have humor in our advertising. Uh, it's part of our culture, it's part of uh, our identity. And, uh, and the globalization just killed that. And I'm going to show you. So, since the beginning, this is a really part of the Brazilian scenario. Like people selling stuff on the streets. It's not like Bangkok or other place, but uh, it's, it's more like it's not like James Bond movies that you see people screaming on the streets, but uh, it's a little Greek clothes. So people start selling in Salvador, as you can see, fear real. Uh, and that's that's that shaped the Brazilian style of advertising, the humor, the the joke, being crit uh, being critical about anything. And then I see here the first advertisement in Brazil was launched in 1914, so it's it's nothing, it's really nothing. So the, four, the, the first 400 years we didn't have anything advertising, it was only bikini and samba, that's it. And now, in this, the last six years that we had a big difference, a big change, because uh, one of our presidents that's uh, trying to, to make Brazil like grow 50 years in just five, so came all the industry, all the uh, automotive industry and really changed the scenario. At this time, agents like Thompson and McCarrison, Lintas and Grant and Ayer, they came to Brazil and, and brought quality and professional standard. But they brought the standard that they have and the, the framework that they have in the U.S. and they just ignore the Brazilian way of doing stuff, of doing the creativity of Brazil. At that time, we had some agents like Almap, DPZ, and some national agents, and, but the, the market was dominated by the, the, the multinational agents. A few years, like in the 1964, we have um, a military, they took power of the Brazilian government, and the advertising changed into propaganda, was military propaganda. And so most of their international agents, or they left Brazil, or they just stayed quiet because they couldn't do anything. This was the, the, the tag of the Brazilian military power, was Brazil, like it or leave it. So. <laughs> With the return of democracy, the agents came back, the international agents came back to Brazil. At that time, we had uh, like in top 10 agents in the ranking, we have like six or seven Brazilian national agents dominating the market. But when they came, they started buying and buying and buying, and so he, they took over uh, again of the, 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 the Brazilian advertising business. Advertising, uh, f the face and publicity, uh, somehow, they, when they came back, they tried to do the same model, the same framework they had in the first time. But they couldn't because at the time of the military, uh, when they took power, uh, power of Brazil, they, they uh, we start to grow the, our identity again. And that's when they, the, the international agents came, they start fighting against, uh, well, I want to buy DPZ or GM9, two of the Brazilian best agents, but I want to change everything again. In Brazil, they didn't accept, so they start to open new agencies. But today, the market is really dominated by uh, multinational agents. And here is really the opportunity in the base of my thesis because if I didn't have opportunity, if I couldn't see a scenario, I'm going to quit uh, this thesis and go for another one. But I, see, I feel now that the future is bright for us. The present is a uh, Spanish word, it's Negro, but the future is bright. We have like most of the, the, the top 13 agents are, uh, are multinational agents. 
but 69% of the funding in Brazil is from national announcers. So, we, if the advertising agency in Brazil nowadays has a really clear, uh, clear um, project, uh, he can make a lot of money, can do a lot of stuff. Because the market in Brazil is now 20 billion dollars a year, and the growth is uh, for the traditional age is 12.8, but it has a lot of stuff, a lot of money here with 9.7 billion, with internet, direct marketing, PR. So today in Brazil we have a stable economy, uh, a competition between the Brazilian soul, the, agen the agencies that really believe in the Brazilian way how to do it, and the global white or beige agents, the ones that come to Brazil and try to change everything. So, and then we have opportunity because uh, if he, uh, the market is really growing 20.8% a year, it's really a, a big difference. So, when I see the opportunity, I see that if we, the Brazilian agents have the opportunity to renovate the business model through valuing the personality, uh, we, we really can fight against the global groups that we have in Brazil. It's in the Bible, be either hot or cool, but not be lukewarm. So, Brazilian agents uh, or advertising agents cannot be, cannot be warm. They have to decide, uh, they have to put differentiation in their work. And, and I think in the fashion industry, if you go, you can understand, you can have a lot of lessons from them. I go for the fashion industry. From the time a man and woman first started to use clothes, thousands of years ago, it has been historically proven that it was a means of showing different status. So here is the base of the fashion is create a difference, showing people codes, not uh, products only. If you buy something from Gucci, you buy the environment, you buy everything, you buy the clothes that Gucci has, and not the purse, they're not the bag, not anything like this. So I choose fashion because it provides an example of brand creation that displays identity and quality. The beginning of the segment dates back from the Industrial Revolution, we, when this man uh, created uh, a pattern for swing machine. So the Industrial Revolution really changed the, 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 in the fashion industry before, because before it was just tailor and dressmakers. But the guy who really changed was Poirier. Paul Poirier was really the, great, the first guy who really understood that he was not selling dress, he was selling an environment. One, one thinking about uh, the, of codes, of, uh, a bunch of codes that people want to buy. Paul Poirier, he was the creator of fashion style just before Chanel and Steve Radelli. So he freed the woman from the process. But what he really did, he was a pop star. He took his collection to, also, uh, to, to Europe and the United States and created a lot of the products like perfume, bags, things that was not uh, part of the, the fashion at that time. They just created dress at that time. And he, he said, no, we had to do more things. We had to create the environment. He was really the first great designer to create that. He understood that a fashion label has a DNA, has identity, uh, and he has to put more stuff and create the manifesto in the, this DNA, try to, to explore in the maximum, because people are going to buy these codes and not one object. And they go to the Gucci model. Why Gucci? Because Gucci, uh, he, they did, they follow Paul about this model, but uh, Gucci you can go and see, you can, you can feel you, uh, right now, and Paul is there, you can just see stuff from him on the books, so, uh, here a little bit of the history for Gucci, but what really interesting is like this. Gucci, and he is the model that I think they have, and uh, is they understand your strengths, create from these uh, history to solve into trust, and
and disseminated the culture in the company and it was good it did the family they introduced the leather goods that was in non quality so they understood that was a strength that they had and after that they increased the value of this DNA they, they strengthened the mito Aldo that was one of the Gucci uh, owners he created the mito that the family had been supplied to the medieval, uh, medieval royalty and it was, was not true, it was, was a lie but he, he created a rumor about Gucci and he spread the creation piece to shops in order to reinforce the mito so uh, somehow Gucci that was a really poor family in Firenze he started to build things and it was part of the royal family and it was not true in, but then he created the meat. And after that, uh, he started to transform consumer into faithful following. He created more points of contact because people want that meat, they want to be part of the image of royalty. And so, Gucci created a non portfolio and what he called affordable luxury. So, he created this model, and with this model, Gucci was one of the most important brands in the world. Um, and I think hear what Sanford says about the objects, the object that the, the, the Gucci image was just as important as the clothes itself, the object, the shop, concept, the publicity, of the decoration, the clothes, worn, the stuff, everything is important. So my conclusion is, Brazilian advertising is passed through unique moments. We have opportunity now to be more Brazilian, to, to really show our identity. And looking for fashion industry, we really can uh, understand what they have, understand all the strengths that they have, and learn from them and put in our business not have everything the agency like uh, today that you have PR and internet and stuff like that but outsourcing most of the stuff like fashion does and concentrate and have more of the DNA as the meat of uh, the agents in the agents because the, the, when the DNA is defined, we have to believe in that and try to do a lot of things and bring companies together to create more followers that will be clients and stuff like this. I think that Fox agents tend to increase the turnover in a solid fashion if it speaks the same language of segment tribe that it knows. So I really think about reading and doing all the stuff that uh, if you advertise in agents, mainly in Brazil, focus and create more identity and focus to learn about the fashion industry and then how they did it, I think we can really have more revenues and more profitable, more, we are more profitable company. For that, I create, I was transferring the, the Gucci model for advertising agents, I think. The first thing uh, an advertising agent has to do is to understand the strengths, the value that they have, the power, what is strong and what is weak in the agents. After that, invest in decoration, architecture, agents, professional behavior, business model. Try to change everything to increase the power of the, 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 the strengths that this agent has. And after that, create another company and associate with companies that have a similar DNA. Build a business around your company. So build a group besides the agents and become our agents with the DNA, something that we don't have nowadays. That's my point. That's it.